Well, welcome to The Right Wing from Civically Minded. I'm your host, Corey Wing. I want to begin tonight with an apology. I'm sorry for the delay of this reaction video as I had every intention to film and upload this content on Wednesday. But as a North Carolina resident and someone who has friends and loved ones in the high country, I've been mentally distracted and weighed down with their plight and the escalating horrors that are coming out of that region. Now, I will not be discussing this event at all tonight in this video, though it really is one of the most important stories unfolding in real time. I will be joining a team of volunteers from our church on Saturday to go to the area, and I hope to document some of what I see, as well as get a real idea of what is happening on the ground and what the people who survived truly need from those of us that want to help in any way we can. Please stay tuned to my channel for that video in the next few days, and I will do my best to offer perspective, analysis, and comfort to all those that are struggling with questions about this tragedy. Now on with tonight's episode. Have you ever heard of an October surprise? Well, it's an unexpected event or revelation in the month preceding the presidential election, and it is typically seen as a potential game changer for the outcome. Though the reality of these events date as far back as 1840, the term was first used in October of 1980, when U.S. hostages were being held in Tehran during the Iran hostage crisis. Ronald Reagan's then campaign manager, William Casey, would coin the term October Surprise, and it's gone on to be a staple of American presidential politics every four years since. And this year, of course, would be no exception. The last few weeks have been a wild ride in the world of national and even international politics. It was, remember, a mere 18 days ago, well, as of this recording, that a second assassination plot on former President Donald Trump would be foiled by the Secret Service. In the bushes of a West Palm Beach golf course, they would find the poor man's Gary Busey, hidden, armed with a rifle, a rangefinder, and other tools for carrying out his nefarious deed. Now, thank God, Ryan Wesley Ruth was spotted, caught, and remanded into custody before he could do any real damage. Remarkably, though, that's now ancient history, and almost hard to remember considering newer, more pressing stories that have hit the airwaves. It was also around that same time that Sean Diddy Combs was arrested and charged with multiple counts of sexual assault and abuse, spanning more than 15 years. He's currently awaiting trial, and many are hopeful that this new sexual concierge to the rich and powerful will not meet with the same end as did Jeffrey Epstein. Perhaps this time, the little black books will indeed be opened, and we can finally see those guilty of these crimes brought to justice. But, we'll see. But do you love a good scandal full of greed and corruption? Well then, you know, New York City Mayor Eric Adams' October surprise might be the one for you. He is currently indicted on five federal charges related to bribery, wire fraud, conspiracy, and soliciting campaign contributions from foreign nationals. But if I'm being honest, I think most Americans expect a little old-fashioned quid pro quo when it comes to big city mayors. And speaking of legal troubles, Special Counsel Jack Smith made a key filing regarding his investigation into former President Trump's 2020 election case. Luckily for all of us still salivating over the three-and-a-half-year-old January 6 witch hunts, well, there's U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin, who's more than willing to run with this newly released evidence and see if she can succeed where others thus far have failed in keeping Donald Trump away from the ballots of American voters come November 5th. The Democrats, who were so successful in getting the other old white guy off the ticket, just can't believe how stubborn this old white guy continues to be. Fortunately, the left has a nearly limitless arsenal of D.C. swamp creatures, technocratic billionaires, popular musicians, Hollywood elites, and yes, even big Eva Stooges, ready and willing to do their part for the cause. So when Russell Moore, David French, and Curtis Chang's after-party Christian political curriculum, whatever that is, wasn't changing the hearts and minds fast enough, it was Moore's own pastor, Ray Ortland Jr., who placed his seasoned and respected thumb on the scale. His 
theologically nuanced and easily confused Instagram thread was quickly deleted because of the overly erudite nature of it. He apologized later and stated that he should have known that he would be mistakenly understood and taken out of context. My own Bible college and seminary training, of course, were of no use. I ended up needing my third grade daughter to explain basic English grammar and sentence structure to me. Then, and only then, it finally clicked. And next, we have the October surprise that almost was. The Longshoremen's Union began striking on Monday across nearly all major U.S. ports, instantly crippling our import-heavy economy and raising real fears of supply chain woes, the likes of which we haven't seen since the height of COVID. Their demand of a 77% pay increase over the next six years and their fear of increased automation are the main drivers of this lockout. But in a major lifeline to the current administration, they've agreed to pause their strike until January 15th. So maybe it's an October surprise that's just holding its breath. And now on to something that has many dispensational Christians holding their breath this week. And that's the ballistic missile attacks launched by Iran on the state of Israel. It seems Israel's famous Iron Dome missile defense system, as well as U.S. help, neutralized the vast majority of the attack. But, in fairness, I haven't received confirmation of the Red Heifer's whereabouts or her safety. And finally, Tuesday night gave us the one and only debate between vice presidential candidates Ohio Senator J.D. Vance and Minnesota Governor Tim Walls. And right out of the front, I want to say this. It was probably the most civil debate that I've witnessed in nearly 10 years, and for that, I was both impressed and grateful. The moderators from CBS, who once again acted like sullen school marms, asked questions ranging from energy independence and climate change to immigration, abortion, and gun control. And much like the earlier presidential debate, there was actually little detail given by either party in way of substantive policy details or real governing blueprints. It was more of an evening of towing the main candidate's line and not embarrassing the established party rhetoric. Historically, VP debates don't really move the needle for many, but it seems an expected rite of passage for the running mates that are assisting their party's main candidate. And it's here that I will say that the Democrats have an enviable way of presenting themselves unobtrusively normal when they're on the debate stage. They often come across stately and congenial, and, well, this was no exception. Tim Walls spent most of the evening seeming like your quirky grandpa, easily startled but lovable, and certainly willing to spin a good yarn full of colorful embellishments, even if not exactly all of them were true. I'm looking at you, Tiananmen Square. But even grandpa should know the difference between a boy and a girl. And he should also acknowledge that a woman's body stops at her body. It certainly doesn't include the uniquely different one that is growing inside of her. And therefore, each human deserves dignity and protection under the law, especially the most vulnerable among us. Governor Walls did, however, give me the most exceptional piece of voting gristle that I've received from a politician since Sarah Palin told us that she could see Ru Russia from her house in 2008. And this came when he said, as the debate drew to a close, that he's friends with school shooters. Now, I'm still chewing on this gristle, and I'm not sure what it means, <laughs> but wow. Now, if the Democrats have a knack for presenting better than they actually ever govern, Republicans are almost always the opposite. I mean, who can forget the warm and pleasing tones of Bob Dole or the excitement of Jeb Bush? Republicans generally come across uncaring and cold, and I was pleasantly surprised here as well. Senator Vance began with a brief introduction of himself and a description of his family, and it felt normal and relatable. Now, sure, he looks like the guy you went to college with that double majored in medicine and law while also dabbling as a venture capitalist on the side. But, you know, the constant look of what my wife and I are convinced of eyeliner does give him this 80s glam rock devil may care vibe that balances it all out. And, you know, it kind of seems to work. His Midwest hard case upbringing and military service make him a confusing everyman, albeit one that is still an eyeliner. There is no question that Vance was the more prepared and qualified speaker, and he easily won the debate on substance and gravitas. His answers were always crisp and direct, 
and he didn't suffer the foolish fact-checking and Karen-like behavior of the CBS moderators. And this made him look strong and authoritative, both of which are important qualities in a man that was is going to be a single heartbeat away from becoming president should he win the nomination. I also felt his closing statements were some of the most precise and most gracious that I could recall from recent memory. My only real complaint at all from this debate performance was the continued softening on abortion that the new Republican ticket keeps pressing. This extremely centrist view kind of harkens back to the Democrats of the 1990s. And back then, we Republicans were rabidly against that position. So if the Overton window has shifted that far left in such little time, then quite honestly, I fear where we draw the line. And how do we realign the party that historically was a party of conserving when it seems like it's conserved so very little? I don't know. But if you have ideas, why don't you leave them in the comments below? And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Maybe share it with a friend. That would be an October surprise that I would welcome. For the right wing from Civically Minded, I'm Corey Wing. Until next time.